everyone, welcome back to First Hand Globetrotting. I'm back for part two of my guide to Six Flags America. If you haven't watched part one yet, the link is in the description. In it, I talk about where the park is and give you a tour of five of the neighborhoods. Main Street 1776, Looney Tunes Movie Town, Whistle Stop Park, Mardi Gras, and Coyote Creek. In this video, I'll talk a little bit about the food options and then show you the rest of the park. That leaves three neighborhoods, Chesapeake, Gotham City, and Hurricane Harbor. So sit back while I take you on a tour of Six Flags America in Washington, D.C. While you're at Six Flags, you're going to get hungry. Since you're not allowed to bring outside food or drinks, you'll probably need to eat at the park. Unfortunately, the food quality isn't great and it's pretty expensive. But that's pretty standard for amusement parks. It's mostly going to be things like pizza, salads, chicken strips, cheese steaks, and burgers. But there are also places to get some slightly different things like Asian, Tex-Mex, and barbecue. And of course, there'll be plenty of snack stands for things like popcorn, pretzels, and ice cream. But as I said before, don't expect the food to be high quality or really fresh and be prepared for high prices. The rides are really what you want to see, right? So let's start looking around the neighborhoods. Chesapeake is the central neighborhood of the park and doesn't really have much of a theme. It's pretty spread out and has rides that go from kid-friendly all the way up to massive roller coasters. As you'll see, it's home to a lot of the classic rides that you see at every amusement park. The Great Race is one of the more family-friendly rides in this area. Riders drive old-timey cars around a track and they can steer and give it gas as they go. But there's a metal guide down the middle that makes sure it stays on course no matter how bad your driving is. And of course, what amusement park would be complete without a carousel? Nothing too unusual about this one, it's a pretty standard carousel ride with a zoo full of animals to sit on. Another amusement park classic is the teacups. This one is also pretty standard, with a tea party full of teacups spinning around the teapot. Things start to speed up a little on Pirate's Flight. It's another swing ride where you sit in a pirate ship and get spun around in a circle. I showed you a few other swing rides in my other video, and this one isn't much different than those ones. For a different experience on a ship, there's high seas. On this one, your boat rocks back and forth on the waves. It starts out easy enough, but eventually the waves get so big that it seems like you're pointing straight at the ground. Firebird is one of the newest and biggest roller coasters at Six Flags America. In this one, you're seated like you would be on a normal roller coaster car, but your legs are left exposed. It flips and twists and turns around every corner. So you go from being seated normally to upside down to on your side, all in the blink of an eye. If you like roller coasters, you'll definitely want to try this one. The other big coaster in this area is Roar. This one is more of a classic wooden roller coaster with plenty of big hills and steep drops. But the cool thing about it is that it has lots of tight turns and crossover areas, making it seem a lot faster. If you're looking to cool down after a hot day, try Shipwreck Falls. You go down a pretty small hill but make a huge splash when you get to the bottom. There's almost no chance of staying dry on this ride, but for an even bigger splash, just stand on the bridge. The last ride to check out in Chesapeake is Cyclone. This is another classic ride that you've probably seen before. As you sit in your spot, the whole ride spins around and each of the arms spins you around even more. Chesapeake also has a stunt arena. When I went, they were showing Battle at the Badlands. It's a live-action, post-apocalyptic show where two groups of survivors are fighting for power while battling giant crabs. The actors fight and jump and climb and swing all over the stage area. They even add in some pyrotechnics to the show. This was by far the biggest scale show they had at the park, and it's worth checking out if you want to sit back and relax for a few minutes. Next up is the Gotham City neighborhood. As you probably guessed from the name, the entire area has a DC Comics theme to it. It's home to some of the bigger, faster rides, so there won't be too much for kids here. But there's a Batmobile park there, in case any Batman fans want to stop by and pose for pictures. The first ride you'll come to is Riddle Me This. It's a stand-up ride where the platform raises up and tilts on its side as it spins you around. 
you've probably seen variations of it at other amusement parks, so there usually aren't long lines for it. A really popular ride here is the Joker's Jinx. Usually, you expect roller coasters to slowly raise you up a hill before a big drop. But Joker's Jinx immediately accelerates out of the starting area and then goes through a crisscross of tracks and a bunch of tight turns and loops. Definitely one of the most exciting rides at the park and it was really fun to ride. The Penguin's Blizzard River is the only water ride in this area. You get into a big tube and are taken up a conveyor belt to the top of a water slide. As the tube goes down, it spins you around in circles before eventually splashing you down into the pool at the bottom. I've shown you a few other swing rides, but by far the biggest is Wonder Woman Lasso of Truth. You start off on the ground, but as it spins, you're slowly raised 24 stories in the air. The ride itself is actually pretty smooth and calm. Most of the excitement comes from how high in the air you get. If you don't mind the height, you get a great view over the rest of Six Flags America. Another ride that takes you really high up is Superman Ride of Steel. It's mostly a standard roller coaster, but the big thrill is the huge initial drop. After that steep, fast downward area, you go on a pretty long ride along the rest of the track. The last ride to check out is Batwing. You start out lying flat on your back, so the initial drop feels like you're going head first over a cliff. After that, you're flipped over so that your belly is towards the ground like you're flying. It's a really cool sensation, and near the end feels like you're flying only a few feet from the ground. This one is near the back of the park, but it's definitely worth the walk. The last neighborhood in the park is Hurricane Harbor. It's the water park area, so it's only open during the warmer months. But it's great for hot days, and there's plenty to do there. It's almost like a park within a park, and has a bunch of its own stores and restaurants. The centerpiece of it is Hurricane Bay. It's a huge wave pool surrounded by lounge chairs. If you don't want to wait in lines, this is a great place to visit. It's a perfect spot to just sit and relax in the sun and splash around in the water. And every few minutes they turn on the wave machines so you can sit back and let the waves push you around the pool. Another place that's good for relaxing is Wahoo River. It's a typical lazy river where you grab an inner tube, hop in and let the current guide you around. There are a few water features around that'll spray or dump water on you, but otherwise it's mostly just a relaxing ride around the loop. Inside the river is another pool area you can swim in with a waterfall along one of its sides. It's mostly just a place to relax in the sun, but there are a few water slides there. Calypso cannonballs are two small slides that splash down into the pool. Bamboo shoots are an even smaller pair of slides and only for tiny kids. On the other side of the waterfall are Vortex and Riptide. These ones start to make things more exciting since the slides get a little bit longer and add in some turns. The only real difference between Vortex and Riptide is that they turn in different directions. But the real serious slides start with Shark Attack, Mako, and Hammerhead. Both of them have two steep drop sections connected by a straightaway and follow identical paths. The only difference is that while Hammerhead is completely covered all the way down, Mako opens up for the final drop into the pool at the bottom. Next door to the sharks is Tornado. It starts out normal enough as you ride in four-person rafts down an enclosed slide, but then you pop out into a giant funnel where you're spun and whirled around until you come out at the bottom. Next up are another pair of slides, Paradise Plunge and Reef Runner. They're pretty much the same, other than the direction they turn you. You ride on a tube as you twirl down the covered slides with a few open air spots along the way. If you want another four person raft ride, there's Bahama Blast. It's a long, snaking slide that's mostly covered, but has a few open air spots where you get water dumped onto you from a waterfall. The fastest slides in the park are probably Bonsai Pipelines. You stand nearly straight up at the top, and then the floor is pulled out from underneath you. That makes a start incredibly steep and fast, and then you're spun around some quick turns before splashing down into the landing pool at the bottom. You can slow it back down a little on Zoomazon Falls. Each of the slides is named after a different Amazon animal and takes a slightly different path down to the bottom. But they all go through a foresty area at the park, making it seem like a ride through the rainforest. 
And for a completely different experience, try Half Pipe. You start in a tube at the top and then fly down one side of the ride before racing back up the other. It takes you up and down both sides a few times before you finally stop down at the bottom of the half pipe. If you're tired of waiting in lines and just want to get splashed, head over to Splash Waterfalls. It's a big water play structure where you'll pretty much always have some water being poured or sprayed on you. As you climb up, there are some smaller kid slides that you can use to get back down. Or if you climb even higher, there are some bigger slides you can ride. But if you want a play area that isn't quite as wild, there's Buccaneer Beach. It has some smaller play structures and water features that are a little more relaxed for younger visitors. It's also a nice splash pool for kids who aren't quite ready for the wave pool. So as you can see, you're going to have plenty of chances to splash around or relax in the sun at Hurricane Harbor. One last thing you can do before you leave the park is ride the Capitol Railway. It's a bigger train ride that takes you through some of the wooded areas of the park and by the maintenance buildings. You go through a couple of park neighborhoods, but it's mostly just a relaxing train ride. So that's it, I've shown you everything that Six Flags America has to offer. In this video, I showed you Chesapeake, Gotham City, and Hurricane Harbor. And don't forget to learn about Main Street 1776, Looney Tunes Movie Town, Whistle Stop Park, Mardi Gras or Coyote Creek. Check out part one of my video. The link is in the description. Hopefully I've shown you a lot of great things and you know what to expect at Six Flags America. But if you have any questions, ask me in the comments. And while you're at it, like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. On Instagram, I'm firsthand globe trotting. On Twitter, I'm firsthand globe. Follow me on there. And don't forget, it's an incredible world out there, so pick up your passport and do some firsthand globe trotting of your own.